All right, let's see. All right, let's see how we are looking. I'm always having issues with this thing. If somebody comes on, then I know that we are good to go. I just want to make sure this is right. So as you come on, just leave me a comment, heart, thumbs up, something. As you come on, just leave me a comment. A heart, a thumbs up, or something. I can't see anything. I want to make sure I see your stuff. Brenda, Brenda Tom, Brenda Thomas, there we go, all right, I can see you, I can see you, forgive me everybody if I don't see your comments right away, I know that Facebook has been having some issues with that, um, just some type of latency or delay, you know, with the comments and the amount of time that it takes for me to see them, you know, so by the time that I do see them, it's probably like super late. So forgive me if I don't respond right away. If you put something down there. Also, if you do put something down there and, you know, I'll try to read as much as I can um, as best as possible. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. So so please, you know, just bear with me, <laughs> you know, as you know, technology is good, you know, but it has its flaws sometimes, you know, and um you know, everybody's using, utilizing the Facebook platform. So I'm grateful that we do have this platform. I'm not complaining at all, but I just want to make sure you guys know that I'm not ignoring you and that I do see your comments. I do see your hearts and your likes. And, um, you know, if you do post something, I'll try the best that I can to to read it. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Well, good afternoon. Listen, as you come on, just let me know how you're doing. You know, I know it's Friday. We made it to the end of the week. Some of us, it may have been a rocky week, a, a challenging week, you know, a stressful week, a trying week, you know. But as you come on, just let me know that how you're doing. Let me know how your day is going. Um, listen, I want I want to tap in with you guys. I want to I want to see how you guys are doing. I don't want to miss a moment um, to what's populating. Uh, Prophet Shanika, what's going on? Listen, as you guys can see, I'm in my office. So if you see boxes, you see pictures and, and stuff, you see the mannequins. Listen, all y'all females, don't be looking at the mannequins, okay? They for they for my business. So listen, um, if you see all that stuff back there, um, I'm just trying to get everything situated in my office. So I got boxes and stuff all over the place, you know. As you can see, I'm at home. I know it's different. Like you see me in a different scenery. You see me in a different environment. I know I'm usually in my car. You know, y'all usually see me in my car. You know, that's what, that's what a fire... You you know, comes, you know, but but I believe that God is going to deliver on this afternoon, even in my office. So I'm grateful. I'm going to try to change it up for you guys now. You know, God is doing new things. God is doing amazing things. So I'm grateful for this season of my life that I'm in. And um, yeah, like I said, as you come on, just just let me I, I just, just, you know, just say good afternoon. Let me know how you're doing. I want to see what's going on. And then we're going to get into this thing, you know, um, I know I always say I'm going to try not to be before you long, but um, I'm in the house with the kids. So, you know, they listen. <laughs> I'm surprised I even got on this thing, you know, without the kids around me, you know, but the little one is asleep. The baby is asleep. So. So listen, if she wakes up, I might have to grab her. So, so you guys bear with me, man. I'm excited about today, though. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. You know, God is faithful. God is amazing. God is still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I'm excited that I get to live and move and have my being because of him. You know, God is a faithful God. No matter what is taking place, no matter what is transpiring around,
Deuteronomy. I know that God is faithful. God has never failed me. God has never forsaken me. God has never turned away from me. Listen, and God, that's the same thing for you. That's not just my testimony, but that's your testimony too. You know, we can all stand and proclaim that God has been faithful, that God has been in our corner, that God has been by our side, that God has pushed us, you know, that God has had our back, you know, no matter what, when everybody else has failed, when everybody else has turned away from us, you know, when things just look all shaky and shady and foggy, in our lives, you know, God is still faithful, you know, so I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited that I live to see another day, you know, despite everything that's going on in this world, everything that's going on in the nations and in the countries and in the continents, you know, you know, it's a, it's a shaking, a great shaking that's taking place, you know, it's unexpected, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable, you know, it's inconvenient, you know, to most and to many, you know, but for me, you know, this is the greatest time for me, you know, because I get to really, you know, draw nigh to God. And, and the Bible says that as we draw nigh to him, he will draw or not to us. So even if you're on a stay at home order, which like many states are, you know, take, take advantage of that time, you know, to really seek the Lord, to really seek his face and to really seek what he would have you to do for this next season in your life. I believe that God is stirring some things up on, 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 on the inside of his people and that God is getting ready to do an amazing thing in the lives of his people, the people that are called, the people who have been chosen, the people that are few, you know, the people that have been set apart, you know, from this world. I believe that God is getting ready to do an amazing amazing thing in your life. I believe that we're going to see evangelists rise. We're going to see ministers rise. We're going to see prophets rise. We're going to see pastors rise. We're going to see teachers rise. Listen, the gifts that are on the inside of, you know, people are going to start beginning to interpret dreams and interpret tongues. I believe that people are going to start dreaming again. And the dreaming is, it, listen, there's going to be so many dreams that you're going to you're going to have to buy multiple notepads to write everything down. But listen, I encourage you, write everything down as God reveals it to you. I believe that these are the times that we are living in, that God is about to reveal some things to his people. You know, I believe that this is a critical hour that God wants us to know some things that are happening, not just in a natural realm, but even in the spiritual realm. Listen, I believe that God is raising up his fighters. God is raising up his warriors. God is raising up his intercessors, even in this time. So listen, so fret not. You know, when you look at the news, the only thing that they're showing us on the news is how many people are dying from this COVID-19, from this coronavirus, but they're not showing us anything about the people that are living, about the people that are fighting through it, about the people that are getting better, about the people that are being healed. They're not showing any of that, right? They're not showing that in, in some states that the cases are lower. They're not showing us that. They want to show us the things that create fear on the inside of us. But listen, I've been sitting here to tell you that, listen, God is still faithful, that God is still on the throne that God is still merciful, that God is still gracious, that God is still the same God, and he's going to do everything that he will be, that he has promised to do, even in this time. So listen, fret not, fear not, don't be discouraged, don't be disheartened. I know that you have to go through uh, maybe some adjustments in your life, some financial adjustments. Maybe you have to go through some employment adjustments. Listen, maybe you have to do some different, some things different. Your schedule is all out of whack, all out of sync. But listen, I listen. I encourage you. God is still faithful. God is still faithful no matter what. God is going to do his greatest work, not just in this world, but he is going to do his greatest work in your life. Sheila, thank you for coming on. Tanya, great. Thank you for coming on. Apostle Reggie, thank you for coming on. Good to see everybody. Um, Siobhan, I hope I said that right, Siobhan, good to see you on, Christine Champagne Craig, that is, that's what I'm talking about, Christine Champagne, I bet you they call you, they, they can't call you by your first name only, they gotta say Christine Champagne, just because it flows, amen, good to see you, thank you all for coming on, I'm excited to be before you guys, my name is Jermaine Hilton, I'm one of the leaders here at Contagious Church Charlotte. Uh, Ryan Tidwell, good to see you, sir. Um, I'm one of the leaders here at Contagious Church Charlotte, the master EP, the executive pastor, the one and only. You can't find no one else. Like I'm just playing. You know, I'm just Jermaine Hilton. I'm just a servant. You know, whatever God is calling me to do, I'm going to do it. Wherever God is calling me to go, I'm going to go. And right now, God has me at Contagious Church Charlotte. Listen, where is it? it is an amazing ministry. If you've never tuned in, if you've never came to this page, listen, I want to Thank you for tuning in to Contagious Church Charlotte. Um, this is the main um, campus's uh, web page, uh, Facebook page. But if you go to Contagious Church Charlotte uh, Facebook page, please consider liking. You know, we definitely have a lot of content coming out of the page and we don't want you to miss it, especially in these times where, you know, where everything is going online. Hey to my beautiful wife, Keandra. 
uh, where everything is online. You know, now everybody's streaming. So we definitely don't want you to miss what's coming out uh, of the page, not just the Contagious Church Charlotte, but even on this page. If you're new to this page, consider liking, you know, consider telling everybody else about it. You know, I always get on here and I say, you know, go ahead and share. But listen, I, I, I wait, you know, until it's when it's feeling real good to you. You know, when you feel like kicking your cat, smacking your dog, when you feel like leaving your refrigerator open just because, you know, go ahead and share the broadcast. Don't do none of that stuff. We don't want your bills high. Definitely not now. We don't want your bills high. We know some of y'all dealing with some financial stuff. So please, you know, if you can cut down on the bills, cut down on the bills. Listen, I'm excited about today. Um, as you can see from the title, um, we are still in the same series, the Sent One series. Um, this has been an amazing series. I'm grateful that we are still in the series. I think we've been in this series for two months, and it's just it's just been amazing. You know, we even started a, an academy, you know, Sent One Academy. They created a book and everything, you know. So it's just amazing what God is doing in the Sent One series. And I came today just to continue that series and continue what God is, is, is saying um, and revealing in this season. I believe that God has a word for his people. So I'm going to go ahead and say what thus saith the Lord on today. And I'm going to try not to hold you guys too long because, um, my, my baby's probably going to get up and I don't want her crying and hollering on the screen, you know, and all of that good stuff. So, so if you have your, if you have your Bibles, let's just go real quick to, um, Genesis 15, Genesis 15. We're going to start at verse one of Genesis 15. Um, God gave me this a couple of days ago. Um, God gave me this a couple of days ago, and uh, I've just been praying on it and studying it and just seeing what, what he would have me say on today. So listen, um, we're going to go to Genesis 15, Genesis 15, and the title of today is Sent to, uh, what was the title today? I don't forgot my own title, Sent to Believe and Follow. <laughs> Nakia, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming on. Again, I may not see you guys' um, comments right away. If you guys post something, I may not see it right away. So just bear with me. I'm going to try to get to your comments. I'm going to try to respond as quick as I can. It's just the lag time, the latency time with Facebook. Um, we don't see the comments right away. So I'll try to look up and look at your comments um, as they come on. And just forgive me if I don't see it. Um, but I will get to you. I promise you, I will not leave you out again. I'm in my office. You see all the boxes and stuff, you know, just, just look at me. Don't even look at everything behind me. You know, I, I, that's still a work in progress. Amen. So Genesis 15, and I'm going to read from verse one and I'm reading from my beautiful Bible that my, my wife gave me. You know, I love this Bible It's the Tony Evans study Bible. I, listen, I'm grateful for this Bible here. You don't have a study Bible. Please consider getting a study Bible. You know, I believe that Yes, we should read scripture. Uh, um, we should also study scripture. But I believe that God has given um, has given the ability to and given wisdom to many um, authors and to many people to 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 pen down a study Bible for us to better understand scripture in context. So if you don't have a study Bible and if you've been called to ministry, if you feel like you've been called to ministry, definitely consider getting a study Bible. One of the ones, one of my favorite ones, is this Tony Evans study Bible. I also, also have a Matthew Henry's commentary, and I also have a uh, John MacArthur's study Bible. I have a couple of study Bibles, but listen, consider getting one, you know, and if you do consider getting one, definitely consider the Tony Evans study Bible. Genesis 15, verse 1, and it reads, after these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Abram is, is short for Abraham. His name wasn't changed yet. So to, to Abram in a vision, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you give me since I am childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Abraham continued, look, you have given me no offspring. So a slave born in my house will be my heir. Now the word of the Lord came to him. This one will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look at the sky and count the stars. If you are able to count them. Then he said to him, your offspring will be that numerous. In verse six, Abram believed the Lord and he, cr he credited it to him as righteousness. So what do we see here? So Abraham is having a conversation with God. And Abraham is old at this time. He's, you know, he's in his 80s and he's pretty old and he's he's looking at his wife and his wife is old too. And he's like, listen, God, I don't understand this. You know, um, you, you, you said that I can have a a, a, a child, you know, I, I want a child. I want to have a, a child, you know, and uh, uh, God, you promised one, you promised that I will have one, but why don't I have one? I don't understand what is going on. God, I'm, I'm in my old age. I don't even see how it's possible for me to have a child right now to produce a seed. I don't see how it's possible. And he, he's having this conversation with 
for God. And he's like, God, the only only person that I see that's probably, you know, worthy of even being my heir is this Eliezer of Damascus. It's this slave boy that that is in my house. That's the only one that I can look at and see that will be my heir. And, and God is, is telling him, he's like, no, this is not going to be your heir. I have not called Eliezer to be your heir. I have called an, another seed. One, one, listen. One that is going to be your heir and one that is going to, listen, produce a seed that is going to be numerous as the stars. And he begins to tell Abraham to go outside and Abraham goes outside and he says, look up at the sky and I want you to look at the scar the stars, as, as many stars as you can see. And listen, I want you to know that even greater than that number that you can see is going to be your seed, is going to be your offspring. So I don't want you, I want you to fret not. Listen, I don't want you to be disheartened, Abraham. I know you're old in age, but listen, there's nothing that is too hard for me. There's nothing that I can can't do, Abram. All I need you to do is trust me right now. I need you to trust me and what my word is saying. And all Abraham did was believe God. And because he believed what God said, because he believed that God told him that he was going to have another seed, that he was going to have another heir, all he did was believe God. And because he believed God, it was credited to him as righteousness. Listen, so when you look at the Old Testament um, and the New Testament, you know, the way to salvation in the New Testament was believing in Jesus Christ. And, you know, the way to God, the way to salvation in the Old Testament was believing in God and be believing what God has told him. You know, so in this instance, Abraham just believed God. He said, OK, God, I believe what you're saying. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how it's possible. I don't understand it, God. But because you said it, I'm going to believe it. And, and look, so how, how many of us are like Abraham? You know, how many how easy is it for us to just believe? Believe what God said and just listen. I know. I listen. I'm not one. I'm. I'm not. I'm gonna raise both of my hands. Listen, because I'm gonna tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm not the type of person that's just gonna believe God automatically and what He says. You know, we go around telling people just believe what God says. Just have faith. Just trust God. Yes, that sounds common. Yes, that sounds right. But listen, not all of us can do that. Not all of us have that gift of faith. Abraham must have had that gift of faith to just believe what God said because I'm. You know, he's probably looking at his frailty. He's probably looking at his bones. He's probably you. Know, know, dealing with the off writers, you know, he's probably dealing with all these stuff that these old people, listen, no, no, no offense to the old people. He's probably dealing with these things that the old people deal with. And he's probably like, listen, God, I don't understand this, you know, but, but God, I'm just going to believe you because you said it. And if you said it, I'm going to believe you. So what, what am I saying about this today? Because you've been sent to believe and not only believe, but you've been sent to follow. You see, the two and two coincide with each other. They go hand in hand. You can't just believe without following and you can't follow without believing. You see, when you look at Abraham and the situation with Abraham, Abraham believed God, but not only did he believe God, but he also followed God. Why? Because if you continue to read the text, you will understand that God didn't give him this seed automatically. God didn't give him this seed the next day after he woke up. God didn't give him this seed after they finished having a conversation. No, it was years upon years upon years before Abraham began to see the manifestation of the promise that God had given him way back when. You see, he was looking at Eleazar the first year. He was looking at Eliezer the second year. He was looking at Eliezer the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year. And he's like, God, I don't understand this. I don't, I don't get this. God, you told me that I was going to have a seed. You told me that I was going to have an heir. You told me I was going to have a son. And you told me that this son was going to have offspring that listen, greater than the star. Listen, I don't understand God because I'm looking at Eliezer. This is the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year, the sixth year. Listen, listen, it must have been about 86, you know, 86 I want to say he had his he had a son because he got frustrated. He got frustrated. He said, God, you know, I don't understand what's going on. So I'm going to do it myself. How many? Doesn't that sound just like us? You know, we don't believe God. We don't trust God in what he's telling us to do. You know, that because we haven't followed, we just believe God, but we didn't follow him. And then because we didn't follow him, we took matters into our own hands. So Abraham took matters into his own hands. He said, you know what? I'm going to produce another seed. So he looked at his wife and his wife was barren. He understood that Sarah couldn't have a seed. So he says, I'm going to do this my own way. So he took her handmaiden and he had another son and he had a son called Ishmael. I believe it was around the age of 86 that Abraham had this seed called Ishmael. And he said, this is going to be my heir. But just like God being the God that he is, he said, Abraham, you took matters into your own hands. I didn't say that this was going to be the way that the promise was going to be fulfilled. This is all you're doing. This is not my doing. So you might think that I'm going to allow Ishmael to be um, the heir to the throne, but Ishmael is not going to be the heir to the throne. But I'm not going to forget about about Ishmael. That is still your seed. I'm not going to forget about him, but I want you to understand that that is not going to be your heir. And how many of us 
go out there and take matters into our own hands. You know, I, I know I'm not just talking to you, but I'm talking to myself because I've taken matters into my own hands because I couldn't wait. I got impatient and I got tired of the wait. And I'm like, God, I don't understand what you're doing. God, you said it was going to happen. God, you, God didn't tell me how it was going to happen. He just told me it was going to happen. And I'm looking at my circumstances. I'm looking at my finances. And I'm like, God, I just don't understand how you're going to do it. You know, because I don't understand how you're going to do it, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to pull down that Abraham anointing and I'm going to go out there and do it myself. I'm going to produce a seed in what I think is going to be worthy enough to be my heir. I'm going to do something in my business that I think is going to be worthy enough to open up the door to bring in more clients. Listen, I'm going to do something worthy enough in my own intellect and my own ability to go out there and minister the gospel so that I can fill the seats in my church. Listen, who am I talking to pastors out there? If God has told you something, if God has promised you something, if he said, I'm going to allow the multitudes of people to flood your church, then you ought to believe God and what he said. Don't get discouraged because you see two people sitting in your congregation. Don't get, be discouraged because you don't see the people doing what they're supposed to be doing. Listen, I want you to be encouraged and believe what God has told you about your own ministry, what God has told you about your business. I want you to believe God. I I want you to have faith because listen, you have to, you have to believe, and not only do you have to, but you have to follow. You see, Abraham. See, after this whole situation with Abraham, Abraham began to follow. Cindy Eliezer, good to see you. Abraham began to follow God. It was years, it was years, it was years. And although he took matters into his own hands, he still waited for God. He still waited for the promise. So it was about 86, 86 years old, he had this seed. And God told him that, no, Ishmael was not the one. So it was about 99, listen, it was about 99 where Abraham had this seed, where God came through. So you mean to tell me he had to wait 14 years from the time that he had Ishmael to the time that he was going to have Isaac to see the promise of God fulfilled? He had to wait 14 years. What are you telling me? So what is this saying to me? This is saying to me that Abraham didn't just believe God, but he also followed God. So for those 14 years, he believed what God said that he was going to happen. And he followed God. He followed God year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, all the way up to year 14. He followed God and he was consistent in his believing. He was obedient to what God has called him to do throughout those years until, listen, it was all these years that. That, that went by before Abraham was going to see the promise fulfilled. And I'm telling you, listen, it, you, God has promised you. God has downloaded something on the inside of you. God has given you some wisdom. God has given you some revelation. God has given you something. And he said, listen, this is what I want you to do. This is a funny story. You know, so my wife, you know, before we got married, you know, we were dating. And, um, I, you know, I can admit, you know, you know, for, for a couple of months we were dating. You know, I just wasn't really feeling the whole dating thing right there. You know, I was I was still talking to other girls. You know, please don't shame me. You know, this is, this is way back when, you know, I was I was a whole different person. You know, I was talking to other girls still. You know, I wasn't really treating her, excuse me, the way I should be treating her. You know, and out of the blue, she came out one day and she was like, you know, God told me that you're my husband. I looked at this girl like she was crazy. You don't tell me that God said that you my That pushed me even further away because I'm like, listen... I don't believe, first of all, I think you're crazy. I think you done lost your mind. I don't know what you ate today. You didn't eat your Wheaties. You didn't eat your Cocoa Puffs. You know, you ate some off-brand cereal to make you think that I am your husband. And to come out and start talking about me. No, listen, I thought she was crazy. I thought she was loony. I thought she lost her mind. And I'm like, listen, this pushed me further away. You know, so I began to get pushed further away. But she believed what God told her. She believed that God told me, told her that I was her husband. She believed what God told her that I was the one that was sent to be, to be in her life, to be the one, you know, to be her partner. Listen, she believed what God said. And although it wasn't at that very moment when she told me that I was her husband, maybe she shouldn't have said that at that moment. But listen, she still believed God. And because she believed God, she followed God. She followed the promise. She followed what God said, you know until I got myself together because it was months upon months before I realized that maybe this is the one that God has called to be in my life. And I didn't understand it when she first told me, but because she was obedient, because she was patient, because she believed God and because she followed the promise, listen, God gave her the manifestation of the promise. She was able to see it. It wasn't the other boyfriends that she had. It wasn't the other men that were trying to get her attention. She understood that I was the one that was called to her life. I was 
was the one that was sent to her life to be her husband. I was the one that was sent to her life to be her helper, uh, to be her um, side. I was the one that was sent to her life to be her partner. I was the one that was sent to her life to be the man of God that God has called me to be uh, to be in her life. Listen. And I don't know who I'm talking to in there, but listen, God has promised you something. God has told you something. God has said, listen, this is what I'm going to do in your life. And you may be discouraged. You may be disheartened. Listen, you may feel down, but I want to encourage you and let you know that God is not slack regarding his promises. Listen, if God said it, shall he not do it? God will do it. You have to just wait. You have to be patient. You have to believe and you have to follow the promise. Even in a time such as this, you know, you know, some of us are sitting at home. Some of us are like, God, I don't understand. Stand that we in this stay at home order. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen out of this, but God, you done gave me this business. God, you done gave I'm one of them. God, you done gave me this business, Lord. And, and and I know that you gave me this business, God, but because all this stuff is happening, business is not picking up. Business is not going to pick up. So I God, I don't see a way out of this. I don't see an outcome, God. I don't see what's happening. I don't see the vaccines coming. God, I don't see. I don't see what's going on. I don't see anything that is redeeming the situation right now, God. So I'm I'm like, God, what is going on? You gave me this business and I have to sit on this business. I have to lose business. And when I lose business, I lose money. So I don't know. I know it's not just me, but it's you out there. God is planting something on the inside of you. And listen, you got it up and running. You got it established. And all of a sudden, this COVID-19 situation happened. And you're like, I don't know what is going on. I don't see a way out of this. But if God promised you, if he said, listen, I want you to start that business. And, and not only do I want you to start that business, but listen, I'm going to increase your finances. Listen, you're going to be generating some revenue that you've never seen before. The income that is going to come into your bank account. Listen, it is going to be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. Listen, and you may not see it now. You may not understand it now, but not that God is not slack regarding his promise. If he said it, shall he not do it? I promise you, you will see your business increase. You will see your clientele increase. You will see the money begin to come in from, from all, all different sides from the north, the east, the south, and the west. So I don't want you to be discouraged. Listen, I want you to believe God. And not only do I want you to believe God, but I want you to follow the promise. I want you to trust God. Just like Abraham. Abraham followed the promise for 14 years. He believed God and he followed the promise for 14 years. And when he was 99, listen, when he was 99, that promise was fulfilled. So it didn't matter how long he had to wait. The whole thing about it was that God came through, that God showed up, that God did what he said he was going to do. Listen, and God is going to do whatever he said he was going to do. If you are that pastor and God told you to start that ministry and you're like, man, I don't have the resources. I don't have the tools. I don't have the people. people, I don't have the leadership. I don't even have devoted leadership or committed leadership or people that are even consistent. I don't understand what's going on. Listen, I want to tell you right now that if God sent you to establish that ministry, that if God called you out to be that church, you know, especially in this time, if God has called you to be that ministry in this particular time to preach and teach the word of God, to stand on the gospel, to stand on the word, to stand on his truth and to go out there and profess and proclaim this and to go out there and win souls and make disciples to go out there and teach the gospel. If God has called you to do that in this particular time and you have established your ministry, you have established your church, I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to be disheartened because if God promised you that he will flood them gate, flood them doors of the church. If God has promised you that he will send you leadership, if God has promised you that he will send you devoted people, people that are consistent, people that are committed, then I want you to understand that God will come through. God will show up and God will do it. It doesn't matter if it's year one or if it's year 14. God is going to do it. You just have to believe and you have to follow the promise. Listen, I preach something, now my kids are up now, so now you're probably going to hear them. You're probably going to hear them. But um, I preach something, Abraham believed and followed, and it was 14 years later. So I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something and know that, I need you quiet. So I want you to understand something. What I preached last, was it last week or the week before? I preached something last week. I told you these kids are going to need to speak. Ka- Kayla, I need you to be quiet. I'm on the live right now, okay? Okay, I know this is all unorthodox right now. You know, I'm talking to the kids. I'm talking, hey, listen, this is how we do. We parents. Um, so um, two weeks ago, I preached a message on, um, you know, sent to stand and proclaim. And I was talking about John. Uh, John um, God is our source. Yes, God is our source. 
I speak increase into my business. You better speak increase into your business, Christine. I speak increase into your business as well. You may not see it. You may not feel it. You may not know where it's coming from, but I promise you that God is going to show up. And when God shows up, he is going to show up in a way that you never even expected. He is going to do something. He is going to blow your mind. I believe that God is about to blow the mind of his people amidst everything that is going on. He is about to blow the mind of his people. He has not forgotten his people. He has not forgotten. He is about to heal his people. He is about to restore his people. He is about to reveal some things to his people. Listen, he's about to give increase to his people. He's about to find favor in his people. He's about to be faithful to his people. Listen, he is about to show up in the life of his people. And he's about to do the miraculous, the extraordinary, the extravagant in the life of his people. But what am I saying? So I preach to leave them kids alone. <laughs> leave the kids alone. Listen, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, this is a, this is the first for me to have the kids with me. So listen, uh, I'm grateful. But um, hey, so um, I preached two mess two two Sundays ago. I preached a message that uh, sent to stand and proclaim. And I talk about John and John the Baptist. He knew that he was sent. He knew what he was sent to do. He knew that he was sent to stand on the word of God and proclaim the word of God. He didn't, you know, uh, and, and nobody understood it. He was this guy that lived in the the forest, the woods. You know, he lived out there, you know, in the wilderness, and he ate locusts and honey. You know what I mean? He ate the cicadas. You know, he didn't have no Chick Fil A. You know, that was his Chick Fil A. The cicadas and the and the and the and the, and the, and the honey. You know, that was his Chick Fil A. You know, but he came out of, you know, because when, when it was time for Jesus to come on the scene, he came out of the wilderness and he was sent to stand and proclaim the truth about God. And when he began to stand and proclaim the truth about God, the Pharisees, they sent some Levites and some priests out to find out who this man was. They said, we need to understand who this man is. What are you talking about? Who are you? Like, you don't even have no no clothes on. Like, look at you. You, you dressed in filth. You smell, you know, your breath stink. You got halitosis and all because of the cicadas and the, and the locusts. I don't understand who this man is. So they sent people to figure out who this man was. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was quoting Isaiah 40, where it talks about that he was the one that was going to be sent. And even if you read in the Old Testament, how he was going to be sent in the spirit of Elijah to, 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 to prepare the way of the Lord. So he was sent to preach the, about repentance. He was sent to preach the kingdom of heaven, that it was at hand, that the, that the coming of Christ was imminent. So he was out there preaching and telling the people about him and baptizing. And what happened was the Pharisees sent some people to figure out who this man was. So this man said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Listen, repent and, and uh, repent for the kingdom of, lo of the Lord is at hand. See, he understood who he was. He knew that he was sent. He knew that he was called up. He knew that he was sent to just believe in what he was called to do. But not only what did he believe in what he was called to do, he followed the promise. Why? Because he understood the time. He understood the hour. He understood the season. He knew that what he was doing was literally preparing the way for the coming Messiah. He knew that what he was doing was literally preparing the way for the one that was going to redeem. He was preparing the way for the one who was coming to set the people free. So he didn't stop at just believing, but he followed the promise because he knew that Jesus Christ was coming. And, and what I preached on if you read down in Luke 1 and verse 30, how it talks about how when he was preaching, you know, Jesus Christ began to walk around and he looked up and he said, behold, there is the Lamb of God, the one that came to take away sin. And there were two guys, there were two disciples who looked up and they saw Jesus and they began to follow him. But what am I saying? They believed what John said was true about him and they began to follow Jesus. They didn't ask no questions. They just believed it and they just followed it. Why? Because the two and two coincide with one another. You can't just believe without following. You can't follow without believing. There has to be something that you believe in in order to follow it. And in order to follow something, you have to believe in it. So the two disciples, they believed what John said. They believed that Jesus was who he said he was. And they began to follow him. They knew that he was going to take away even their sins and even the sins of the world. So they said, we're just going to believe in him and we're going to follow him. We don't know what he has told us to do. We don't know where he has told us to go, but we're just going to follow him. And who am I talking to out there? That God is just saying, just follow. You may may not know how it's going to happen. You may not know how I'm going to do it. You may not know where it's going to come from, but all I need you to do is just believe and I need you to follow. Follow the promise. Follow what I said because I will show up and when I will, when I, when I do show up, it's going to blow your mind. Listen, so two disciples, they showed up Listen, and, and, and listen, it blew their mind because God, God gave them an assignment. God gave them a duty. God positioned them. He said, you two are going to be my disciples and you're going to be fisher of men. You're going to go out there and preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They didn't understand what their calling was, but God said, this is what you're going to do. So you can either believe it or not believe it. And if you don't believe it, then you don't have to follow me. But why am I saying that two and two coincide with one another? Because I can say this. Listen, I can say to everybody on this live right now, listen, I got a thousand dollars right now. In my pocket. 
And listen, this is what I'm telling everybody on this live. The first person to share the uh, share this broadcast with 10 people, you get $1,000. You get $1,000. That ain't for real. Listen, I don't need y'all going out. Y'all can't go out there and share the broadcast, though, to 10 people. But the first person, this is just a scenario. First, The first people to go out there and share this broadcast with 10 people, I'm going to give you $1,000. Now, it's one thing to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to go out there and do it. Now, you have two types of people. You will have the people that will sit there and be like, Jermaine, uh, Jermaine said that... Uh, if we share the broadcast with 10 people, he's going to give us a thousand dollars. And that's all they're going to do. They're just going to go out there and say, you know, well, I believe what he said that he's just going to go, you know, if we share the broadcast, he's going to give us a thousand dollars. And then you have the other people, the other people that's going to be like, you know what, we're going to go out here and do it. So then you have the other people that's probably, y'all probably sitting there typing right now. Share, 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 share. Yeah, I, I see y'all right now. I ain't got a thousand dollars for you. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, Lord willing, maybe one day, maybe one day I can bless you like that. You know, I'm going to believe that, that God is going to drop that thousand dollar seed in my life so that I can bless somebody else, not just for me. But listen, and, you know, you may be that person that's sitting there and you're going to not just believe what I said, but you're going to also put that into action. Why? Because action proceeds faith. You can't just believe something without doing something because that's just, listen, so you're going to be that one. Which one are you going to be? You're going to be that one that's going to be like, well, Jermaine said, um, if I just, uh, you know, if I share the broadcast with 10 people, I'll get $1,000. Or you're going to be that person that's going to go out and share the broadcast. Why? Because not only are you going to believe, but you're going to follow the promise. You're going to follow what I said that's going to happen. So listen, you have to understand that's what Abraham did. Abraham believed and he followed the promise. You see, the two disciples, they believed and they followed the promise. And I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but you have to believe and you have to also follow the promise. Why? Because you have to understand, I wrote this, faith without an expression of faith is a lack of faith. Faith without an expression of faith is a lack of faith. You can't have faith without expressing your faith. That is a lack of faith. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, I have people that come to me and they say, you know, how do I know if other people are Christian? You know, a lot of people are judgmental about others and they come to me about other people and they say, um, that's right. You know, I got my amen corner. Um, they say, you know, I... Uh, so-and-so was at the club yesterday, and then they got the nerve to come to church the next day. You know, you got some judgmental people. They got the nerve to come to church the next day. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you like this. You know, a faith without expression of faith is a lack of faith. You know, so if people saying that they have faith, there have to be some type of expression out the faith. So even when you see John the Baptist baptizing people, it was an expression, an outward expression of their faith. They believed in the word that, that John was preaching and John was teaching, and because they believed in it, they wanted to give an outward expression of their faith and the outward expression of their faith was baptism. I'm going to show everybody that I believe in, in, what, in what John is talking about. I'm going to show everybody that I believe in the Messiah, that I believe in the Lord. So I go out and get baptized. Listen, I went out and got baptized in front of the whole church. Why? Because I wanted to show people that I just didn't just believe this, but I'm going to follow the promise that God has put on my life. The promise to save me, the promise to redeem me, the promise to restore, restore me, the promise to reconcile me back to my father. I stood on that, I believed it, and I said I'm going to follow it by getting baptized and I know that you out there probably went out there and got baptized, it was an outward expression of an inward faith, listen, because you believe, you followed the promise listen, so when they tell me, listen, I don't know what they're doing, they live one life, they're on the fence but then they come to church, and then they pray, listen I can't talk about their life, I can judge people by their fruits, I can look at your fruit and see if you are a true um, genuine believer of God or not because when you are a true believer there are going to be some fruit that stem from that belief. There's going to be some indication that you are following that which you believe to be true. Because you, if you are following Satan, then you are doing the things that Satan is requiring you to do to follow him. If you are following God, or if you are believing in God, then you are doing the things. You are following that promise. You are doing the things that give people a clear indication as to what you believe. Why? Because you've been sent to believe and you've been sent to follow. You haven't been sent just to believe. Because if you've been sent to just believe, then you're not going to follow. But why? You you've been sent to believe and you've been sent to follow. And I don't know who I'm talking to out there. Some people are just believing in God, but it takes more than just believing in God. It takes more than just standing at the altar, reciting a prayer, saying, repeat after me, and saying, I believe God, that Jesus died for my sin. It is bigger than that. You know, you have to say the prayer, but you also have to live the life. You also have to be discipled. You also have to be poured into. You also, listen, 
You have to follow this thing. And I don't know who I'm talking to out there. That may have been you. You may have went to the altar and you said, you know, I just recited a prayer and I just believe God. But you out there living a, a way that you you like, man, I'm, I thought the way that I was living is cool. I thought all I had to do was just say I believe in God. No, it takes a lot more than that. You know, and that is my biggest thing is discipleship. You know, I, I, I get the repeat after me prayers or the raise everybody close your eyes and raise your hand if you want to give your heart to Christ. I believe all of that stuff. That All that stuff is cool. But listen, let's take it a step further. Listen, if you believe God, if you are unashamed about this thing, if you believe in what I'm saying and what is coming out of my mouth, if you believe that Jesus came to save you, if, we, if you believe that Jesus came and his blood is, 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 was, was shed for the remission of your sins, listen, if you believe this thing, this is what I need you to do. I need you to come forward. I want you to repeat after me. But listen, I want you to believe this thing in your heart. I want you to submit and I want you to surrender to God everything that you have. Give your life completely to him. And not only do I want you to give your life completely to him. Listen, we want to disciple you. That's what I love about Contagious Church. Listen, I know I'm just trying to brag and boast on my church, but listen, that's what I love about Contagious Church because it's bigger than just believing in God. Listen, we implement different resources and tools and methods and strategies and formats for you to grow in your faith, for you to understand what you just believe. Now that you put your faith and your hope and your trust in God, we want to implement these different things for you to be able to understand what you just did. Why? Because we want you to follow the promise. We don't want you to just believe even what we said and what we told you was true about God, but we want you to follow the promise. Listen, and that's what I love about Contagious Church. We have what's called DTI. We Yes, we have our own school where we teach people. We want to teach you about this thing. We want to help you understand this thing so that you can not only follow the promise, but you can follow the promise effectively. So that way, you won't be disheartened. You won't be so quick to be discouraged. You won't be so quick to get down when God, when you don't see the promise being fulfilled, when you don't see the manifestation of the thing that God has promised you. You won't be get discouraged about it. But listen, you will, you will have hope. You will be encouraged. You will continue to persevere. You will continue to press forward. You will continue to push through. You will continue to pray through. Why? Because you have everything that you need in your mind. You have everything that you need in your heart. God has given you the revelation. God has given you the insight. God has given you the wisdom. God has given you the resources. God has given you the tools. God has given you everything that you need to sustain you until the promise, until you see the promise fulfilled, until you see the manifestation of that thing. So listen, I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but you need to have that Abraham anointing. Like Abraham said, you know, I'm just going to wait. And because he waited and believed what God said. It was credit to him as righteousness. Listen, God is about to credit some, credit some people with some, listen, God is about to credit some things unto you as righteousness and all you have to do is just believe and follow the promise. Believe and follow the promise. Believe and follow the promise and God will show up and when he shows up, I promise you, he is going to blow your mind but I want to show you something and I'm going to get out of your way. Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Let me see real quick. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, real quick, real quick, real quick. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, you were sent to believe and you were sent to follow. Ephesians 2, oh, 8 through 9, and it reads, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we shall walk in, and we are his workmanship, created in good works. We were created in good works unto Christ Jesus. Listen, so listen, it was by grace that we are saved through faith, right? Not, not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God. God says, this is my gift. I'm going to extend my grace to you so that you have the opportunity to have faith in me. But listen, I want you to believe. That's what Paul said in Ephesians. Paul said that in Ephesians, for it's by grace that we are saved, and it is not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. I want you to hold on to that, and I want you to jump down to James. We're going to jump down to James 2. I want to jump down to James 2 because they're saying the same thing, but they're saying something. Uh, James is emphasizing on it a little bit more. James 2, 17. And it says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. I want you, I want you to listen. I want you to hear me out. So Paul is saying, it is by grace that you are saved, not by anything that you have done. So what Paul, what Paul is talking about, Paul is talking about a genuine faith that saves. He is not talking about a sustaining faith. He is talking about a genuine faith that saves. And a genuine faith that saves is a, is a, is a, is a, is a faith that is given by the grace of God. And that grace of God is a gift that is given unto us. I want you to follow me and understand. 
understand this. So what Paul is saying, I know many of you are probably confused. Well, Paul is saying, but it's not by works. But James is saying it is by works that you are saved. That I want you to, I want you, I'm going to help you out on today. Paul is talking about a genuine faith that saves. The, the redeeming, the redeeming faith is the great is the faith that was sent by grace of God. So the grace of God was was allowing us to have faith in Him, and that is the faith that that literally saves us from our sins. That's what Paul was talking about. So when you jump down to James, he is talking about even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. This is what I'm talking about. You have been sent to believe and follow. And I think James was taking on. He took what Paul said, but he went a little step further. He just said, it is not by works. It is not by works. But I mean, if faith... It is if not had works, it is dead, being alone. So your, your your works have to accompany your faith. And if your works don't accompany your faith, then you really don't have any faith. And that's what James was saying. He was saying, Yes, you do have faith. You do have a genuine faith that saves, but I'm talking about a professed a professed faith that sustains. So there is a faith that sustains you. And because you you have a genuine faith that saves you, you need a faith that is going to sustain you. So the, the faith that is going to sustain you is a faith that shows up, that gives us the indication that you have faith are your works. There are, there are things that you do. There are things that you do that gives us a clear indication that you believe in the God that you talk about, right? Because you not only believe, but you also follow. So that's what James was talking about. You not only believe, but you also follow. And the key indication that you follow is your works. So if I don't see any works and your faith is dead, right? An expression of uh, uh, a faith without an expression of faith is a lack of faith, right? James was taking on that concept. So listen, I don't want you to get it misconstrued or get it misunderstood, but they both were talking about the same thing. James was just showing you that you've been sent to believe and that you've been sent to follow. And you have to follow the promise. And the way that we know that you're following the promise is when your works show up. When your works, when you, listen, when we see those things happening, we know that you believe what God has told you to do, what God has told you, or what God has promised you. Listen, so we're going to get out of here real quick. Action follows faith. And that's what they were talking about let me jump let me jump to this real quick real quick real quick real quick real quick and I promise I'm gonna let you go Titus 8 and this is why you have to maintain good works this is a uh, Titus 3 Verse eight, this is a faithful saying and these things I will, I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, might be careful to maintain good works. Let's put this all into perspective. Let's close, close this thing out right. This is a faithful saying and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable, profitable unto men. You've been sent to believe and you've been sent to follow. I got to read that one more time. Let this resonate with you. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. If you believe in God, be careful to maintain good works because you've been sent to believe and you've been sent to follow. I don't know what it is. I don't know what God has told you, but I promise you, God will show up. God will show up. All you have to do is follow the promise like Abraham. Follow the promise like the disciples. Follow the promise like Paul was talking about. Follow the promise like James was talking about. And I promise you, you will see the manifestation of that thing. You will see God show himself up to be faithful. You will see God show himself up to be right and true. Listen, don't fret. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Listen, I want you to follow that promise. Don't worry about what's going on in this world. Don't worry about what's going on around you. If God has dropped something in your spirit and he said, this is what I want to do with you. This is what I want you to do in your life. This is what I want to do in the life that are people, with the people that are connected to you. I want you to believe what God said and follow that promise. And I, I promise you, when you follow that promise, you will see the manifestation of that thing. Whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next week, whether it's a month from now, whether it's a year from now or years from now, God will show up. And when God shows up, you will see the manifestation manifestation of that thing. I promise you. Read Titus 3.8. Titus 3.8 will sustain you. I promise you. So listen, that is my word for you guys on today. I kept you guys for 50 minutes. 50 minutes. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know it was 50 minutes. It felt like 30. But um, God is faithful. I want you guys to be encouraged. Um, listen, stay safe out there. Listen to what they're telling you to do. Just obey, you know, and just and just believe what God is saying and believe what God is doing. 
And um, I promise you, man, God is going to do the miraculous. God is going to do his greatest work. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm believing that God is going to do his greatest work. And I want you to believe that God is going to do his greatest work. It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter the obstacle. It doesn't matter the challenge. It doesn't matter what you're faced with, what you're encountering. I want you to believe God and I want you to follow God and follow the promise. Amen. And God is going to remain faithful. God is going to remain just. God is, God is going to remain true. God is going to to remain favorable. Listen, God, if that is even a word, God is going to do everything that he said he was going to do. No matter what, God's word will not return to him void and God's word will complete everything that has been set out to do. If God said it, shall he not do it? God said it since the beginning of time and God is a, is a God of no time, but he operates in time. He stands out of time and he operates in time. So you can't go against what God said. If God said it, then he obviously sees the ending. If God sees the beginning, then he obviously sees the ending. He sees the middle. He sees every step of the way. So listen, I don't want you to doubt God. Don't turn away from God. Don't stop believing in God. Because if God said it, you must believe that he, he is saying it because he saw the beginning and he saw the end. So you have to believe God. He's not just telling you something. He's not just giving you a promise because he sees the beginning. He's giving you a promise because he sees the beginning, the middle, and the ending. So believe God and follow that promise. Follow that promise. Follow that promise. Hallelujah. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Contagious TV. Ryan Blessings, Nakia Blessings, um, Christine Blessings, Sheila Blessings. Let's see what's is on here. Blessings to you. Um, uh, Diana, blessings to you. Um, blessings to you, Matasha. That's different. Um, blessings to you, Desiree, uh, Prophet Shanika, Apostle Reggie, um, my wife, Keandra. Thank you guys for tuning in. Cammie Shropshire, thank you for tuning in. Blessings to all of you guys. Thank you guys. Um, you guys have been amazing. I want you guys to stay safe. Um, listen to what they're saying. Believe God and follow God and um, God will remain faithful. This is another episode of Contagious TV. Uh, we look forward to it. Like I said, if you've never if you've never been to this channel, please consider liking this channel and, and tuning in every weekday at noon. We'll have a, a, a different speaker who will come on live and just uh, just give you some wisdom, you know, in a time of hopelessness and, and, and um, doubt and just worry and anxiety and fear, you know, so please tune in every week day at noon and also um since we're streaming live i definitely want to make this out there we're streaming live at all campuses so tune in at 11 o'clock on a contagious church charlotte facebook page 11 o'clock sunday morning where we will be streaming our services 7 30 on thursdays we will be streaming our bible studies and Wednesdays at 7 um, for the Contagious Church Tampa on this page. You can tune in for their Bible study on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, streaming live. And Sundays, I don't want to get this time wrong. Lord, please forgive me. 10.30 or 11 o'clock. Ah, please, somebody, please. What time does Contagious Church Tampa <laughs> stream live on Sunday? Oh, Lord, I should know that. Listen, it's just been a, uh, uh, it's been a rocky week. My mind, The way my memory set up. Um, please, um, just, just tune in, just like the page. You'll get the content. Go to www.contagious.church. You'll find all that information there. If you want to sow into the ministry, you can find that information there. We also have an app, so you can go to your app store, download the Contagious Church app, and you can find that there. You can do whatever you want there. You can sow, you can, you know, you can be a part of the ministry, all of that good stuff. So please, we just want you to get connected. You know, the, the greatest, the greatest tragedy for you to not do right now is stay close to God. So please stay close to God, stay connected to a, a biblically sound church. A biblically sound ministry, you know, who are teaching and preaching the word of God without um, fault and flaw. Amen. Uh, we thank you guys. I love you guys. Blessings to you all. Happy Friday. Um, be encouraged and um, have a great weekend. Amen. 1130. Thank you, Prophet Sean. 1130, man. I didn't know they stream at 1130. Oh, well, 1130. Um, Contagious Church Tampa. I, I, I could have sworn it was like 1030, 11. 1130. Contagious Church Tampa um, Sunday mornings. Oh, I stand corrected. Um, thank you guys again. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And um, I'm out.